Now, I don't care whether you are a dormouse, you are insanely shy, insanely anxious, you fake it till you make it. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising Earth Crew. My name is Lucy and today I wanted to film a video on how to deal with bitchy co-workers. Uh, firstly, you're gonna have to excuse the hair. I thought it like looked quite nice, but it actually looks like a bird's nest, but it is what it is. So, bitchy co-workers. Now, I have done a lot of videos on like joining a ship, what it's like to join a ship, and the fact that nine times out of ten you're going to meet your team members and they're going to be really nice they're going to be really welcoming because everyone remembers what it was like to join a ship for the very first time it's terrifying so like normally especially at first everything is going to be fine everyone's going to be super super lovely but there is that one percent chance that you might enter a team and you can just tell that there's a really shifty dynamic or everyone's super welcoming at first but then you get a few weeks into your contract and you realize that everyone that you're working with is a bit of an asshole. and the reason that this is so much worse on a cruise ship is because unlike at home where you leave work and you go back to your friends and family and you have a life outside of the office or whatever work you do on cruise ships as I have mentioned before, the people you work with are the people you live with, are the people you socialise with, are the people you go out and port with. Like, everything is all, like, meshed together. So, when you leave work, the chances are, unless you are actively avoiding these people, you are going to spend time with them, have to see them. So it's really hard to find time to get away from whatever the dynamic is at work if that makes sense and because of this every relationship that you make on a ship is magnified if it's a good relationship you become really close really fast and it's intensified if it's a bad relationship that's also intensified because it's not just confined to the nine to five hours that you work on land it is pretty constant so we're going to go through how to deal with that if you do find yourself in that situation because i have been there and it is it's really shit and it, it can make you basically it can ruin your time on cruise ships which would really be a shame because it is such an amazing opportunity and such an amazing job um to have it ruined by a bunch of people so without further ado let's get into it so firstly i'm going to go through what happened to me on my very first contract so joined my first ship when i was 19 years old as i just said when i first got on board everyone was super friendly everyone was amazing a lot of them were english so i was like this is literally amazing however give it two weeks or i gave it two weeks and everyone's true colors started to show i don't even think it was two weeks it's probably a few days and I realised that there was an undercurrent of bitchiness. There was a big clique, you know, a lot of cliques in the spa. Um, everyone was really nice to each other's face, but they were all bitching about each other behind their backs. Uh, the, even the manager had, like, no control over the spa because it was basically governed by these few girls that were like Regina George, Gretchen Wieners and Karen, I'm, you know that's the best way I can describe it and um, it was just horrible, it was just really shit and because I was the new girl and I was 19 and I definitely don't have the confidence or didn't have the confidence that I have today, I was very shy, very introverted, desperate to fit in because I was on a new ship at the other side of the world to where I live, I let them walk all over me. You know, they always gave me the treatments that they didn't want to do. They asked me to go and like fetch things for them and just a lot of other stuff. And I would do it because I was a wet blanket and like I said, new environment, social inclusion needs, you want to fit in, you do it. And I was basically an emotional beggar. I was just like, give me whatever scraps of friendship you can spare. Now, obviously these weren't my kind of people and you know they were never going to be my friends they were only going to continue to use me because they had no respect for me and why would they i didn't earn their respect i did what they told me to do i wouldn't have respected me so i realize now looking back that i handled it in the worst way that i possibly could have but the best way i knew how at the time because it was my first time ever leaving home my first big girl job so what is the best way to handle this someone gave me some advice once and it's one of my favourite pieces of advice that I've ever gotten. It has always stayed with me and it is is with people and their attention 
The less you want, the more you will get. The less you crave someone's friendship and attention, the more likely you are to actually get that. And it's so true, I mean, the people who come in now and you can just tell they do not care whether you like them or not, people really tend to like them. Whereas the people who come in and they're like how I was at 19 and they're like, oh, please like me, please be my friend. There's just always something missing. And I think it's because you can feel that they want something from you and there's like a an energy pull there. Anyway, so this is going to be easier said than done, but you need to go on this cruise ship not caring if your team members like you. You are going to be on a ship with 800 or more crew members on board, which means there is going to be someone or a few people on board that you get on with, but they're not necessarily going to be in the same department as you. So it's really important, as I've mentioned in other videos, that you make friends in other departments. And if you go in kind of with that mentality, you then won't put so much emphasis on making friends within your department. So it actually makes it easier to make friends because there's less pressure to, if that makes sense. The reason that this is effective is because if you don't care about being liked, you can concentrate on being respected, which is what you should do at work. That is the most important thing, that you are respected by your colleagues and your managers. And when there is a base of respect, that's when people can either decide if they like you or not, because without respect, do you even have a relationship? There's a lot of people that I like, but I don't necessarily like respect them or admire them. So, I'm not like killing myself to spend time with them. However, the people that I spend the majority of my time with are the people that I truly respect and there's something about them that I admire. So you wanna be respected first and foremost. So how do you do this? Okay, so your first day, when you first enter that team and you have to say who you are and meet everyone for the very first time, it's so important that you are confident. Now, I don't care whether you are a dormouse, you are insanely shy, insanely anxious, you fake it till you make it. If I'm not feeling confident, my confidence idol is Rihanna. So, if I have to go into a room and be confident, I'm like, okay, let's pretend I'm Rihanna. Not, I'm not going to go in there and start singing, <laughs> but... I'm just gonna act like I believe Rihanna would act in that situation, like Rihanna is not shy. And the great thing about this is if you fake it enough times, it will one day become real and you won't even have to zip yourself into that Rihanna suit or whoever you choose. First impressions really do count. So if you go into a meeting and you give off that air of confidence, nine times out of ten, no one is gonna come for you, no one is gonna mess with you. Like. Because they're like, okay, she's she's not the one, or he's not the one. He's obviously got his shit together. He knows who he is or who she is. So we're going to back off. Whereas if you go in and you're all timid and nervous and shy, you're instantly putting a target on your back for a person that isn't that great. And like I said, nine times out of ten, you're going to go into a team and there won't be anybody in that team that you need to protect yourself from. Everyone will be genuinely lovely. However, it's the world we live in. There is always a chance that there's going to be some horrible people. So confidence is key. Whether it's fake or real, ooze confidence when you meet people for the first time. Okay, but let's say, you know, you've already been there for a few weeks and there is a a bit of bitchiness going on towards you. Don't go to your manager. I know that sounds absolutely counterproductive, but do not go to your manager and moan about it, unless it is severe. And here's why you don't go to your manager. You go to your manager and say, oh, like this person is being like really bitchy to me, like they're, you know, they're being mean to me or they're hurting my feelings, whatever they're doing. Your manager doesn't care. I'm gonna be completely frank with you. Nine times out of 10, they don't care. They want a drama-free life. Your manager is there to do the job, which in their eyes isn't babysitting you and your feelings. If you do this, this is probably gonna do nothing but affect your relationship with your manager in a negative way. Because your manager is just gonna see you as someone who is stirring the pot. Even if, even if you're not and your complaint is completely valid and that is what's happening, I'm telling you now, that's how your manager's gonna see it. So that's one reason why. But the other reason is if your manager then goes to Z person that you were complaining about and says, okay, she said this, like, he said this, please stop doing this. All that person is gonna think like, oh, 
she's gone and ran to mommy. She doesn't have the balls to confront me about it herself. You're literally increasing the size of the target that is on your back. If they are a toxic person, like, if they're a nice person and they were just doing something to you but they didn't realise that it was offending you, firstly, then of course they're going to come up to you and be like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I, I didn't even know I was offending you and that'll be the end of it. But if that is the case and they're a genuinely nice person who just made a mistake, you should have confronted them about it one-on-one -on -one without bringing your manager into it. But also, if they are a toxic person, even more reason to confront them about it one-on-one -on -one for the reason that I have just given. So you have to confront this person head on and you have to be strong. This is why it's so much easier if you can position yourself as a strong character right out the gate. You know, if you've been really timid and shy up until now and then you suddenly come in, I'm not gonna take no shit, it's gonna, it's gonna seem fake. But better late than never. So at first you want to confront them one-on-one -on -one about the situation. So let's say this person has been bitching about you behind your back, um, or they've just been bitching about your character, or they're taking credit for your work, whatever it is. I don't care what they've been doing. It's the same advice. You confront them head on, strong, one-on-one -on -one at first, neutrally, clearly, devoid of emotion, calm, collected with facts. You don't go in there going, can you just stop doing this because like you're really hurting my feelings and it's making me really upset and this is my first contract and I'm so scared, da ba da ba da ba Nah man, don't do that. You're gonna go in and say, look, I know that you've been saying things about me behind my back. I really don't appreciate you acting like a child. I think it's extremely unprofessional. And after all, we are at work. So if you can't act professionally in this work environment, I suggest you get another job because you're obviously not cut out for this environment. Like something along those lines. It was completely emotionless. I wasn't upset. I wasn't hurt. That's probably going to stop whatever's happening because they're going to see that you have grown a backbone and that you're not going to take any shit. Now, if this does not work and they continue to do what they were doing, you're going to confront them publicly in front of the whole team, especially if they are renowned for doing this thing. Like, you know, maybe there's a girl in the team and everyone knows that she's a bitch or maybe there's a guy and everyone knows that he makes like sexist jokes or homophobic jokes or whatever. Um, but even if they're not like known for doing whatever they're doing, you still want to confront them publicly if confronting them privately has not stopped their behaviour. Let's say they are taking credit for a piece of work that you did and they're going off in the meeting about how they've created this presentation. You're going to say, excuse me, sorry to interrupt. Um, I think you'll find that I actually did that piece of work that you are currently taking credit for. So if you'd like to correct your statement and um, include me in the credit, I think that would be professional. And that's it. And you hold your gaze, you don't fidget, you don't speak. You let her do the fidgeting or him do the fidgeting. Oh, oh yeah, 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 you, um, you did help with the project. If they're calling you names or they are, you know, being derogatory to your face, then you go for their intelligence. Because let's face it, it's only unintelligent people that do that kind of shit. And most unintelligent people are insecure about their intelligence. Maybe they are excluding you from things, which can be really hard, you know, if everyone has been invited to the crew bar and you're like, oh, I guess I just missed that invite, or everyone's gone out in port together and you're like, oh, okay, I'll just stay on board on my own. It is hard. However, you need to accept that, okay, these people obviously aren't my people. And there are probably 800 other crew members that I can make friends with on this ship. So concentrate on that rather than trying to be friends with the people that are excluding you. Now, as I said, having these reactions and doing these things, that it's not going to get you liked. But why would you want to be liked by people who are horrible? It's going to get you respected, and in turn, that is going to get people off your back. So, most likely, this is not even going to be an issue. Everyone on cruise ships mostly are friendly, lovely, genuine people who want to make you feel welcome. But if you do find yourself in this situation, then at least now you know how to handle it. And another silver lining that I will add is if you enter a, a workspace on land and the dynamics crap, that's 
terrifying because you're like okay well these are the people that have been here for the last five years and are probably going to be here for the next 10 years they're not changing whereas on cruise ships people are starting and finishing contracts constantly so it's likely that the person that is causing you grief for the dynamic that is in place now it's only going to be in place for the next two or three more months and then people are going to start to leave new people are going to start to come and therefore a new dynamic is going to present itself but anyway guys i really hope you find that video helpful i actually hope you never need to use that advice but you know if you do then i hope it helps i hope it works if you have ever gone on a cruise ship and you've had a, a shitty team dynamic but you have been able to rectify it um i'd be really interested and i think everyone who's watching this video would be really interested to know how you did that so please let us know in the comments we're all here to share information or here to help each other this is how i would deal with the situation but i'm sure there are hundreds of other ways that you can deal with someone who's bitching about you someone who's being mean whatever it is um but yeah but thank you so much for watching guys i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day whatever you decide to do and i will see you in the next video Bye.